Welcome you out to our store tonight. Tonight you're going to see something about your health, your wealth, and your future that is the most important thing to you, that, to your health, that there ever was. And it's the water you drink. Because you are 71% water, there's nothing more important to you than the water you drink in your life. Water is so important to our body that every organ in our body runs on water. We're lubricated with water, we're heated with water, we're cooled with water. When we get something in our eye, water comes there to wash it out. Water is so important. Water carries nutrients into our body. There's nothing more important to our health, our wealth, and our future than the water we drink. And tonight, you're going to have a lot of questions as we do this show. And I'd like you to hold those questions to the end. And I probably will answer most of your questions as we go through this show. Now, through the, this show, you're going to see some things about water that you've probably never seen before. And I want you to think about it and make a decision in your own personal life what you're going to do about the water you're drinking because that's your job tonight as we go through this show is to decide what kind of water you're going to drink from now on. You're going to learn some things about water that you've never learned before. Now we're going to show you some water. This is tap water and we're going to kind of like put this on a, on a trial tonight and we're going to prove that this water is absolutely filthy and unable to do the job that water was intended to do. This is distilled water. We're going to prove that it's pure water. It's absolutely pure and it's the water we should put in our body. And uh, we'll be able to see the difference between these two waters real quick. The first test we're going to do with water is called the boil test. And what we do is we boil down a half a cup of, of distilled water this pot over here. It's the only thing my wife lets me cook. And then we're going to boil down a half a cup of tap water in this pot over here. Now, if these waters are clean, when that water is all boiled out of those pots, the only thing that should be left in there is nothing, right? If the water's clean. We'll see which water is the cleanest. This is distilled, this is tap. We'll start that test because it takes a few minutes. But one question I have here, does water conduct electricity? You know, if it's tap water, it's absolutely filled to me. No, it does. If I touch these two wires together, that light goes on. That's an open circuit. If he's an electrician, he'd call it a, a normally open circuit. If I put it in distilled water, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And that's nothing because those two wires aren't touching. That's an open circuit. It shouldn't light the light. But if I put it in tap water, it closes that gap. There's something in that water that's making that gap close. And the difference between these two waters is, this is absolutely filthy water, this is pure water. Tap water started out as distilled water. In nature, we have lakes, rivers, and streams. The sun heats these vessels of water up and the vapor rises to the upper atmosphere where it's cooled and condensed back into water. Whenever you take water and change it to vapor, and then back to water, just like this vapor's coming out of the pot here, that's distillation. Rainwater, though, falls through an absolutely filthy atmosphere. It's completely void of anything in it. It's, it's distilled water. But everything in the air is gathered up by the distilled water and taken down to the earth. So you have emissions from factories, smog from cities, solvents from all kinds of chemicals, emissions from cars, trains, planes, and buses. All that is in the air. That's one reason the light is on in the tap water. Our tap water hits the ground. In one teaspoon of dirt, we have billions of bacterium, virus, and parasites. The reason we do is because every animal and insect that's ever lived, reproduced, died, and decomposed has become part of the soil, and that's the food for them. When the rain hits the ground, it picks up these bacterium, virus, parasites, decayed animals, and insects, carries them to a lake, a river, a spring, a stream, a well, it doesn't matter. And that water is, is full of everything that's in the soil. Uh, it comes to a lake, the fish live there, and they die there. And we drink that. We drink everything that's in the soil, every microbi every microorganism, everything that comes in contact with water, water absorbs and transports it. Our water comes to a treatment plant where we're chemically treating our water. That's why it's called a treatment plant. Our water is exposed to many chemicals. This is a, a newspaper from, from Utah 
called Capital Connections, News for About People in State Government, the Utah State Seal. On the back of it, it says, Making Sure Your Water's Safe. It's written about Eva Nemensky. She has a PhD in environmental engineering. She's over all 50 water treatment plants in the state of Utah. She says right here, we're learning about very resistant pathogens in water. They're very difficult to kill, so you need strong disinfectants. These chemicals may ultimately cause cancer over your lifetime. So the question becomes, would you rather have diarrhea today or cancer tomorrow? So who wants diarrhea and who wants cancer? Pretty, pretty good choice there, huh? That's the two choices we have, drinking tap water. Uh, I think that uh, we should drink something else other than that. The cancer they're talking about is prostate cancer, bladder cancer, colon cancers. That's uh, your urinary tract cancers because that's where the water goes first and we're exposed to all the chemicals that's in those waters. We know chlorine mixes with acids in water and that causes trihalomethane compounds. It's linked to spontaneous miscarriages and various cancers. That's according to USA Today newspapers, John Hopkins University in, in New York, and uh, they're the ones that's conducted those tests. When our water leaves the water treatment plant, it goes through the pipe system. Sometimes these pipe systems are hundreds of miles long and hundreds of years old. Uh, in, in Ogden, Utah, where we're shooting this, our pipes are 108 years old, they're cast iron with lead joints coming out of a canyon, out of a reservoir. It goes for hundreds of miles here in the city, back and forth to different houses, comes up into our tap, and we turn these taps on and drink out of our beautiful faucets and think nothing about the journey that that water was on. And it's a long, filthy journey because everywhere that water's been is, is where we walk. So everything that's on the bottom of your shoe is in your water, if you ever think about it that way. That's why when we put the light, in tap water, it conducts electricity. There's 80,000 chemicals in our, in our water. In 1903, we had three people and 100 dying with cancer. In that 100 years till now, we've developed 80,000 commercially produced chemicals. And right now, one in four people die with cancer. And one in three people get cancer. And the cancer rate is still rising. And you think about chemicals in our life. We wash our hair with chemicals. We brush our teeth with chemicals. We wash our clothes with chemicals. We have chemicals on our food. We're a chemical society. The only thing that takes that out of our body is the water we drink. Water absorbs and cleans everything out of our body as it goes through our system. Distilled water is way different. It doesn't conduct any electricity. We know it's absolutely pure water. The journey that distilled water takes is way different than tap water. We bring water to, in a boiling chamber to boil. The steam rises and leaves all the impurities behind in the boiling chamber. The steam forces the coil, the fan cools the coil, changes the steam into 99.9% .9 pure water. Periodically we drain this boiling chamber out. So when we make 50 gallons of water through the distillation process, what was in 50 gallons of water now is trapped in the boiling chamber. When we clean that out, we sometimes are totally amazed with the amount of filth that's in that boiling chamber. Like in Salt Lake City, that's what's in 50 gallons of Salt Lake City water after we clean the boiling chamber up. And people wonder why they're getting sick, why they have diseases. This is Ogden and Utah right here. That's 50 gallons of Ogden City water. Isn't that weird? How much filth is in tap water? You never would believe it unless you see it for yourself. Morgan, up where you work, this is uh, about 80 gallons of Morgan, Morgan City water. Does that look like one of the chemicals they add at the water treatment plant? It does, doesn't it? It's copper sulfate. Now the reason that they put copper sulfate in the water up there is because they have algae growing in the pipelines and copper sulfate is an algicide. Now algae won't hurt us, well, we can eat algae, but when it starts to die and rot in water it smells, you've smelled the Great Salt Lake, when the algae starts to grow and, and rot, it's got quite a, an odor to it. Well, that, when it has that gas inside these pipelines and they inject chlorine into it, it creates trihalomethane gas. Okay? And that's very carcinogenic. That's where we come up with prostate cancer, bladder cancer, colon cancer. Uh, this is, some lady told me the other day she only drinks spring water from North Ogden Spring. That's 30 gallons of the North Ogden Spring. You know, and that's 
that's what's in spring water. Whenever you're drinking right out of the dirt, right out of the ground, you're drinking dirt. You're drinking filth. You're drinking everywhere you've walked. Okay? You're drinking everything that's on the bottom of your shoe. It doesn't matter where that water's from. The filth is there. 